Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Update on my dad. Um, I think he's trying to pass away. I think he's trying to slow down or wind down. I don't know for sure. Just came from out there. So we're trying to get things set up, get him up here to live with us. Um, I'm not so sure he's going to make it. I don't think he thinks he's going to make it either. But uh, we're leaving it in the Lord's hands. And that was what I said to him when I left. It's in the Lord's hands. If it's your time, it's your time. If it's not, he'll make sure that you get up out of this and keep on going. But don't know. Can't say for sure because I'm not in control. I don't have control over those things. So I'm just kind of, at this point, waiting on the Lord. See what he's going to do. And I'll just be ready. That's why I'm filming now. I'm kind of feeling a little early because I'm trying to be ready just in case I need to run back out there again. But, um... I could be wrong, but if I had to guess, I would think he might not make it the next couple of hours or even the next couple of days. I don't know yet. Another weird scenario, just like with my mother-in-law. She went on, She chose to go on hospice and then was trying to figure out how to get back off of it, not realizing that her body was shutting down. Death is a strange thing. All right, so tonight we're going to be reading out of Mark 15, 23. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. Myrrh has a um, anesthetic, anesthetic effect. And so when you put a little bit of that in the wine there, it'll kind of numb you a little bit and it'll take away some of the pain. He didn't want that. He didn't want that. So let's go up here. And this is the crucifixion. Let's see. Start in verse 16. Then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. They think they found the Praetorium, by the way. And they called together the whole garrison. And they clothed him with purple, and they twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. Then they struck him on the head with a reed and spat on him, and bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. So they took him into the praetorium and surrounded him and tormented him like that. The whole, a whole garrison did it. Did it. A lot of, less, less, quite a few people. Then, verse 21, they compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place. And it's so funny, this guy had such a unique privilege given to him and he's barely mentioned in the bible barely mentioned and they brought him to the place golgotha where it, which is translated place of a skull then they gave him wine mingled with murder drink but he did not take it and when they crucified him they divided his garments casting lots for them to determine what every man should take and that this was all spoken of in isaiah now it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation uh, was written above the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking among themselves with the scribes said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Both robbers reviled him until one of them was granted repentance. Well, when they see him, they'll regret saying those things. A golden truth is couched in the fact that the Savior put the myrrhed wine cup from his lips. On the heights of heaven, the Son of God stood of old, and as he looked down upon our globe, he measured the long descent to the utmost depths of human misery. He cast up the sum total of all the agonies which expiation would require, and abated not a jot. He solemnly determined that to offer a sufficient atoning sacrifice, he must go the whole way, from the highest to the lowest, from the throne of highest glory to the cross of deepest woe. This murdered cup 
with its soporific influence, would have stayed him within a little of the utmost limit of misery. Therefore, he refused it. See, Jesus knew that it would soften the blow of the wrath of God, and he had to take it full force. He would not stop short of all he had undertaken to suffer for his people. Ah, how many of us have pined after reliefs to our grief, which would have been injurious to us. Reader, did you ever pray for a discharge from hard service or suffering with a petulant and woeful eagerness? Providence has taken from you the desire of your eyes with a stroke. Say, Christian, if it had been said, if you so desire it, that loved one of yours shall live, but God will be dishonored. Could you have put away the temptation and said, Thy will be done? Oh, it is sweet to be able to say, My Lord, if for other reasons I need to suffer, I need not suffer. Yet, if I can honor thee more by suffering, and if the loss of my earthly all will bring thee glory, then so let it be. You know how many people couldn't honestly say that? And we can, we can think that we could say that. But until we're in that situation, we can honestly never know. We can honestly never know. I hope that none of us have to come to that place. I refuse the comfort if it comes in the way of thine honor. If, if the comfort will make me honor you less, then I'd rather have the pain. Oh, that we thus walked more in the footsteps of our Lord, cheerfully enduring trial for his sake, promptly and willingly putting away the thought of self and comfort when it would interfere with our finishing the work which he has given us to do. Great grace is needed, but great grace is provided. It can be hard to not think about getting a little break, a comfort, some sleep. Um, some kind of respite from the trials that we struggle with every single day. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie and tell you that I haven't thought about that these last couple of months. My mother-in-law died a month ago, and here my father looks like he's trying to. And, and I'm not going to pretend that I haven't had thoughts of uh, it would be nice to have a quick break. But it, it's kind of weird because at the same time, thinking about that, I'm always on red alert waiting for the next moment when I need to take off and go and help and deal with things. I'm in pain, I'm weak, I'm tired, I'm wore out. Stress is at an all time high. But you know what? I find a strange peace within it at the same time. Because even though I may want comfort, even though if I find an opportunity or just a moment to, to steal away and get a little bit of it, I take it if I can. But at the same time, I find this overwhelming sense of purpose, of peace, and of joy of knowing that the Lord is going the Lord is going to be glorified in all of these situations. He was glorified in my mother in law's passing. He'll be glorified in my father's passing. And I think the only question I'll have if my father does decide to go anytime in the next few hours or few days will be who's next? Who can I help next? Who's next on the list that I can assist and escort to the veil for him to take their hand and escort them across? This is me and my wife are starting to realize this is what we were made for. This is what we were brought together for because we are so supernaturally endowed with strength to be able to do these things, to be able to move with purpose, to be able to take care of another person. I can find no other reason why we would be blessed with such an honor to do something like this, but here we are. And I was even talking with my own mother yesterday uh, here at the house about when it's her time and, and what is to be done with her things and, and her wills and, and everything and how she will be taken care of and her and her horses she has, her four horses. So it can be hard for us to, 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 to comprehend the immense depth that is associated with these things. To us, we look on the outside, we see pain, suffering, trouble, trials, all these things, and, and our knee-jerk response is to find a way to try to pass it off to someone else, which a lot of people end up doing. But you know what? We can glorify the Lord more by stepping up and doing what we can. Now, keep in mind, not all of us can do very much. Some of us can do nothing. 
Some of us already have a full plate and are already doing more than enough just in our own personal issues than to be able to help someone else. But listen to me, God will be glorified. The Lord Jesus will be glorified and honored in all these things. Sometimes we got to push the cup away. Sometimes we take the cup, take a little little drink, take a rest. Sometimes we push the cup away. We have to be ready at all times to do what's needed to be done when the Lord calls on us to do it because he uses all of us to great effect in some way. He uses all of us to help in some way. He uses all of us to serve his will in some way. So, when the situation dictates, take a break. When the situation dictates, push everything aside and step up and be the first one to be counted. I'm here to help. What do you need? You got a lot going on. You're right, I do. But I got plenty to handle it. So what do you need? I'm here and I'm ready for you. Who else is here? You see anybody else here? I'm the only one that showed up. Let's go. Let's get it done. Got on the roof yesterday and fixed the holes in my roof. There was four of them instead of two. <laughs> Luckily, the other two were very small. They were easy to seal, but there was four altogether. Fixed. Easy as, easy as pie. Easy peasy. But if it wasn't for the strength of the Lord, I couldn't have done it. If it wasn't for the strength of the Lord, I couldn't do what I'm doing right now for my own father. If it wasn't for the strength of the Lord, we couldn't have done for my wife's mother, my mother-in-law. He made the way. He provided the resources. He gave us the strength and the wherewithal and the desire to help. When we think we can't, that's when he shows up and says, oh, I already have. Remember Elijah. He's running. Jezebel's killed everybody. I'm the last one left. Lord, take my life. Let's be done with it. I'm no good to you. What does he tell him? Well, you think you're the only one I got? You think you're the only guy that can do this? I got 50 hiding in a cave right now, ready to take your place. So here's some food and water. Get your strength back up because I'm not done yet, which means neither are you. So about the time I think I can't go anymore, I stop and think, He's got a whole bunch of other people waiting in line to step in and take my place. Who am I to say I can't when I know he already has, when I know that he will give me whatever is needed to be able to do it? All I have to do is be willing. He will make me able. Lord, make us to be willing. Make us to be willing to do anything for the glory and honor of your name. And then, Lord, when we are willing, make us able to do whatever is needed to bear fruit for you be it taking care of a loved one who's passing, be it taking care of others who are just sick or disabled or aren't able to do for themselves, to be there as a confidant, as a, an ear to listen. Sometimes the most powerful fruit we can bear is a fruit of just listening to somebody and let them talk it out. I'm having to do that too. Lord, whatever we can do to glorify you in this life. Where we lack, give us what we lack give us where we fall short make us to measure up where we stumble make us to stand where we fall make us to get up wherever we are falling short on anything lord make us to measure up to your level make us to do what we need to do for you according to your will concerning anything and everything pertaining to this life and the next Make us to always keep our eyes on you at all times, because when we keep our eyes on you, we walk on water. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your multitude of blessings, known and unknown, every single day, and that you walk with us, and you're there with us, and you're caring for us. I know you were there in the camper just a little while ago. Lord, may we always live to glorify you as your people, to the honor and to the praise of your holy name. It is in that same name, Lord Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for evening devotion. I can't tell you how tired I am. 
how exhausted I am, how frustrated I am. But you know what? That peace, that strange peace that defies all understanding is over me. And I know what needs to be done. I know what I want to do, but I can't help but feel that I've got a hand on my chest saying, just wait. Just wait and watch. And so I'm waiting on the Lord. And when the Lord says, now go, that's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm going to go. That's where I'm going to move. I already know what to do. I already know, you know, that there's a time coming when I'm going to have to act. That's when I'll act. And so sometimes I just need to stand by the wayside and wait until he needs me. And sometimes that's what we need to do. Even in our own personal situations, I can't affect this positively. I'm going to step back. Lord, I'm putting it on the table in front of you. I'm going to let you deal with this because I can't. I don't have the ability, but I'm going to wait on you for you to deal with it in your perfect time. And he will every single time. We may not be able to see it, but he's doing it. We may not understand it, but he's doing it. And we may not, with the details that we have and the things that we see here and experience, we may not have all the information, but he has every bit of the information because he was has already been there and has already done his work before we ever even arrived at that point in history. All we have to do is wait on the Lord. And the most beautiful things will happen. The greatest glory possible will be bestowed upon his name. And we will bear that amazing fruit. Because he does the work through us. That fruit that glorifies him. Be patient. Wait on the Lord. Be at peace. I pray my peace over all of you. I pray he gives you all peace without measure. No matter what our situations are. And that we have an excuse and a reason to pause and glorify his name. Love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.